How about the relative importance of basic science um, as China goes forward? Uh, when I first came to China, I had the uh, privilege of being uh, uh, invited by Dr. Song Jian, who was yeah. head of uh, Gujakuwe Science Technology Commission at that time for many years. And he told me, I remember during the 90s, that uh, mm -hmm. we would love to do basic research, but we cannot afford to do so. We have to focus on technologies that help our people, food and shelter and health, uh, very much so. And then, uh, you know, starting maybe five, six years ago, he's been long retired, but still very, very active. He has now been promoting China is well off. We now must do basic research because it's the foundation of not only China's technology, but it's part of our obligation or participation uh, in the world. So um, I, I, I have seen the transformation and how China's thinking about about basic research through Dr. Song and yeah. wanted to get your sense of, of contemporary, from the contemporary leadership, how important basic science is. Yeah, I, I think now there's a really, I think uh, a, a general consensus on, on basic research is really uh, at the core of China's activ you know, efforts in promoting uh, S&T uh, innovation. I, I think partly was that indeed, I think a lot of the sort of in a way applications are really flown from the, you know, some basic research many years ago. So I think that, that now people think that at this current state, if China wants to continue to move forward in, in the S&T field, in, in the innovation field, there's a need uh, to build a stronger, uh, uh, you know, foundation uh, in basic research in order to really, uh, you know, to become, at the, you know, at the front runner in applied field. So I think that's sort of one side. The other side is also that um, China now feels that uh, given its current uh, uh, S&T development uh, you know, capabilities, China should contribute to the, you know, the global science, to the global knowledge base. So I think that you know, as, a, as an uh, S&T enterprise, uh, in, in, in terms of really uh, playing China's role, due role in, to the world, I think China should also uh, uh, strengthen its, its effort in basic research. Let me give you a, um, an argument that some of my uh, scientific friends in China are concerned about. And that is, how do we motivate the best young talent uh, in basic research? Because on the one hand, you have this enormous draw from uh, commercialization, and not yeah. just as an entrepreneur, but even the salaries that um, uh, top so uh, sure. engineers and scientists are paid are, by industry is very, very high, enormously high. Uh, and on the other hand, there is still the old bureaucracy in the science establishment led by the, the seniority system, some of the old structural ways that are maybe part of Chinese tradition or something. And so, and so you have these, you know, these two kind of pulls in opposite directions. So what about that young, brilliant uh, researcher? What should she do? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, he or she should really still try to, uh, you know, uh, stick to their, uh, you know, their ideal and, uh, you know, work hard on the, you know, in, 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 uh, uh, you know in, in basic research. But I think I would argue at the same time, there's a need for more fundamental, uh, you know, uh, sort of institutional reforms of the Chinese system. Because I think currently, I think that in terms of people who work in the, uh, in, in, the in, in the research institutions, in, in research universities, I think, as you said, salary system, you know, the, the traditional salary system is, is, you know, the basic salary is very low. So a lot of the, you know, sort of in a more additional sort of payment was based on your commercialization, based on your patent application, you know, the number of publications you have, so that's sort of, you know, more kind of short-term, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, um, uh, 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 gains. So I think that uh, so it would be very hard for someone who, who's going to do sort of basic research that in two or three years, there's probably not going to be any sort of output, you know, in the short term. So for those people, they're going to suffer. So I think we need to change the system so that to really allow, you know, so no matter uh, I mean, you, if you're a really excellent researcher, you're doing good research, then your base salary and so on would be, you know, more than enough to, to, for you to have a comfortable life. 
So you don't have to worry about your housing, your you know, uh, payment, and so on. Yeah. That's the things that we, we need to change.